Welcome to the Secret Origin Podcast. I'm Nick Scovegard, and today I have with me Gabby Porter, Digital Marketing Director for Alter Ego. And right now, we're going to be breaking down for business owners one of the things that I know keeps them up at night. It's the what you don't know about your website is definitely costing you money. Uh, Gabby, so you work in digital marketing. You have, for the last four years, helped do everything from SEO to search engine marketing to build websites to person programming. What are the biggest things that sort of keep your ideal customers up at night? When they come to you, what are the same problems that you hear like over and over and over? What what terrifies them? I think you hit the nail on the head with kind of that just overall not knowing. You know, they, they don't know where to start or they don't have the time to dive into it. And they're just petrified that at the core of all of this is this like huge Pandora's box of problems that they're not going to be able to solve. So I think that not knowing and then even if they do go out and get that information, not knowing where to go from there, I think is one of the biggest things that we kind of hear over and over. Or, you know, sometimes the issue is that it's just ugly or broken or they know that something is just not right with it. And they just, they want to just hand it over and just be like, help. It's like a crying baby. They're just like, just take it. Please fix it. I don't know what else to do. And I know that we've, we've talked about this because it's like, it's one of those things where, you know, I feel like we all do this, right? We all have that one problem that we just sort of like sweep under the rug and hope nobody pays attention to. Like, I'll deal with that later. Like, I'll just, I'll just bury my head in the sand and I'll hope it gets better. And so the thing that you kind of told me framing this is that, you know, what you don't know about your website is almost certainly costing you money. If you're that business owner who knows your website isn't quite where it needs to be, and you know that some things are broken, and you know that it's been a little bit ignored, and you've chosen, you know, I'm not going to spend any time or money on it, it's probably costing you money. Can you break that down for me? Why? Tell me about that opportunity cost. What are they losing money on by ignoring their website today? Absolutely. So, I mean, I think the number one thing is kind of just like driving that traffic. If you don't know where that traffic is coming from or if it is even coming to your website at all, that is a huge missed opportunity because you've got all these networks either feeding to a broken website or so on and so forth. And you just don't, you just don't know, you know, it's like, well, yeah, we've got a billboard out front and that might bring us in money, but you have no idea. And with your website, you have an opportunity to be able to bring in the traffic funnel them where you want them to go. But if you're not getting that traffic, that's, that's kind of your first missed opportunity. And building on that is just, is your website working for you? Do customers know what they need to do? And if they do know what they need to do, so, you know, step one, are you getting the traffic? Step two, do your customers know what the heck you want them to do on your website? And then step three is, can they do that thing? Do you want them to call? Okay, where's your phone number? Do you want them to fill out a form? Does that form work? Or do you want them to buy something on your website? Great. Is that even a possibility? Have you tried it yourself? Yeah. Yeah. And and so so you know, you have you have all of these business owners who are out there and they're listening right now and they're probably saying like, oh, that makes a lot of sense for, you know, an e-commerce business or a place that, you know, has a has a store on their website. But but I have an automotive shop or I have a bakery or I have this. When you when you talk about these problems right now, what business owners need to be paying attention to them? Is it only specific business owners? Is it only e-commerce? No, it is everybody. Everybody needs a website. I wholeheartedly believe that. And if, you know, the budget doesn't allow for some elaborate website, you, you still need something, some sort of visual presence. There are options out there available to build a website. And, you know, it's, it's kind of the mentality, like you said, of people being like, oh, well, I don't sell anything online, so I don't really need one. Yeah, but is anyone able to find your business or your automotive industry or your bakery, do they know anything about you other than that they drive by your shop three times a week? You know, um, and let's say that they don't, let's say that they don't drive by or you're not in their commute. You're completely missing out on a huge group of people that just don't know you exist because, oh, maybe they're a little bit millennial or Gen Z and everything that they do is on the internet. It is digital first. That is where people are finding your brands. They're finding, um, you know, information about you. So yes, I think 100% everyone needs a website and they need a good website. You know, you deserve a good website. Friends don't let friends have bad websites. If you, <laughs> I love that. If you notice something, you know, on a 
colleague's website or, you know, someone in your network, I don't think it's rude to tell them, be like, hey, I tried to find your hours and they were nowhere to be found. And that, that, seem, to that, seems like, uh, that seems like today's version of calling somebody and being like, hey, Gabby, just so you know, your voicemail's full, right? Like, exactly. hey, just so you know, like nobody can nobody can get in touch with you. Uh, so when, when you look at these business owners, and I think that, that one of the things that's really challenging is that, that, you know, when you look at more successful business owners, a lot of the people who are running them are, you know, 50, 60, 70 years old. They've been in business for a long time. They're very successful. They have they have something that, that has always worked really well for them. Then they realize, you know, maybe maybe this internet thing is really kind of catching on. Maybe people are using that ticky talk. You know, when when you look at when you look at that, a lot of times like as as somebody who is younger, and again, I'm I'm younger than that and you're younger than me, but as somebody who's a little bit younger, the thing is you have your phone in your hand all day long. And Every customer does too. My, my, my mom is using social media. I'm using social media. My kids are using social media. They're all using that sort of digital device, whatever their sort of safety blanket is, 24-7, 365. Like you have that. That is in your hand all the time. You're not going to go get a phone book. You're not going to go, you know, I don't, I don't know, pick up a phone and call a friend and ask them if they know what time Walmart opens. You're nothing, going to go, you're yeah. going to go Google that. Yeah, nothing is worse than you're like, okay, got this brand new restaurant. Let's go out on a date night. And then you're in the car and you're like, oh my gosh, I don't even know if they're open today. And you go to look it up. And if it's not online, it's like, great, we're driving 30 minutes and I don't even know if they're open. And, so yeah, and, just be and, able to answer those questions for your customers the only thing worse than that is that when you you look at their their whatever google local listing and you go great they are open tonight and then you drive 30 minutes and get there and they're actually closed because they haven't updated that listing and their website has doesn't have their hours or their menu on it that seems crazy to me and i know that both of you you and i sort of work in the digital space and we're sort of you know on that sort of technologically you know uh you know adapted uh, you know generation me me you know uh, more learned and and you because you grew up with it but like as you sort of get into that it's almost hard to fathom the idea that somebody would be like, ah, I don't need a website. Like, I don't need to tell people anything about this business of stuff that I'm trying to sell. That's crazy. So if you're a business owner and you have a business and maybe you have a website that you haven't really paid much attention to, what's the first thing that they should be doing to, to figure out maybe the lay of the land, maybe where they are? How big of an emergency is this? Yes, that's a great question. And I think, you know, my baseline step one, if, if I had a website and I was like, yeah, I don't really know, try and do everything. And I know that sounds overwhelming at first. Let me break it down. By try and do everything, I mean on your laptop or desktop, but then also, especially your mobile phone. So at least two different devices, I want you to try this on. Go through, first off, just try everything. Try it and click all the buttons. Try and navigate the main menu and see where you're trying to go. Can you get there? Is it counterintuitive? Do you have to click and then click again and then it drives you nuts? Um, if you are an e-commerce website, then can you buy something? You know, are you able to go and select a size and get the information that you're looking for, specs, so on and so forth, add it to your cart and then check out? Can you do that? Go through that whole process. It's your own money going back in your own pocket. Just try to transact on your own website. Um, you know, And if it's something that's more maybe like a quote or an online form of some sort, go and try it out. Can you do it? Can you do it on your desktop? Can you do it on your phone? Because that will give you a really, you know, overall umbrella view of, okay, I'm able to do these things, these things, and these things, you know, I'm able to navigate, find the phone number, complete a form on my website, but I'm having issue learning more about this service. Okay, maybe I should focus there. And it gives you a semi-clear roadmap to just some of the issues that are your customers or your users are having on your website. And then hopefully it makes the, the Pandora's box feel a little bit less intimidating. So you're like, okay, I only need to fix these couple things, unless it's a lot, in which case I totally understand. It's very overwhelming, but we can help. Well, so so let's, let's break that down. Would you give me your top three things to check? 
check on your own website right out of the gate? What are the top three things that every business owner should go check right now? Absolutely. I would say starting off, do this entire thing on your mobile phone, smartphone, or even like a tablet, but just something that is a different screen size than your desktop or laptop. That would be, you know, operation number one is that you just start there and then from your phone on your website, close everything out and then try and load it again. Does your website load super, super slow? Is Are you just waiting to do something? So yeah, mobile phone, see if it loads, and then try and complete the conversion path that you are asking your customers to go through. Can you do it? Is it tedious? Does it work? And if you complete the form, do you get the notification? Do you know who does? So oh, yeah. Are- <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, like like you're hurt me because like I I have a, a really long standing relationship with a client that we've worked with for a long time, and this is this has been true of a lot of their marketing. But we do these these great marketing campaigns for them, and then nobody will return the phone call. Nobody's checking the email. Nobody's checking the voicemail. And like, there's a part of you as a marketer that just wants to bury your head in your your hands and like cry when you do all this work to get somebody a lead or a customer, and then they're like, "Yeah, we'll call them back next week." What? Then, then say that it's not working. It's like, oh, I need you to call. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so, so then as you sort of break down, like you know, you've gone on and tested a couple of these things, and and maybe they're working okay. You know, how how much time, how much money, how much effort do you think is worth a business owner putting into to a website? I mean, does does this something that I have to spend $10,000 on? Is it something I have to do for two hours every single day? Uh, is this something that I have to hire a full-time employee for? Can you give me some context for basically like, you know, what are, what are some barometers for this? So it's hard to pinpoint exactly how much time you should be spending on either kind of platform, whether it be website, content creation, things like that. But, you know, As a business owner, you need to spend time on your business. That's completely understandable. If you have a side hobby, you can work on your side hobby, but there are only so many hours in the day. And for you to sit down with all your expert knowledge and either, you know, run a consulting retainer, you know, have a consulting conversation with a client versus go and try and learn PHP to, you know, optimize the server side of your website. I think there's an opportunity cost there. So what... For you personally, as the owner of the business, where is your time best spent? And if some of that is on your website, okay, great. You know, I think that's a good use of your time, but you shouldn't be going through optimizing all these little teeny tiny things if you're the CEO. Um, That's just my personal opinion, but I would say that kind of knowing the issue at first, spend a couple hours, you know, a couple hours researching all of your social platforms, all of your like traffic drivers, spend a little bit of time on the website. Again, that depends how big the website is. But I think as your initial touch point, that kind of investment of time is pretty good. And then from there, if there is someone on your team who can work on the website, kind of give them the report, you know, say, here are a couple areas that I noticed are lacking a little bit. Can we work on these? Setting very specific performance metrics. Because again, you can have someone bring in a ton of traffic, but if that traffic isn't converting, well, what are you telling your people on your website to do? And I think from there, if there isn't anyone on your team and you don't have time to do it, well, maybe time to think about hiring some help. Is that opportunity cost greater than what you would be spending on a new website? And if the opportunity is costing you a lot, maybe switching the script and kind of optimizing your website to improve those leads, that traffic, that conversion, the responsiveness, I think is most definitely worth it. Yeah, and and I, I don't think that they, that could be um, better stated. Um, we use a system called EOS with entrepreneurial operating the system in the business. And they, they have this, this wonderful chart called Elevate and Delegate, right? Like you should be t- spending time as a business owner doing the things that you enjoy and the things that you're good at. And if you hate something and you're bad at it, it's time to hire someone else to do it. And I'm not saying that every business owner can afford to hire an agency. I'm not saying every business owner can, you know, afford to hire a whole team of web developers and SEO specialists. But at some point, you could be your time is better spent doing the thing that makes you money and and making sure that the, you have somebody qualified to handle your website like Gabby. And and I think that that is ultimately even more true when you talk about something that is a high ticket item. You know, if you're selling roofs at, you know, $15,000, $20,000 a piece, if you're selling, you know, uh, you know, Lamborghinis or something like that, 
I think it's really important that you you invest in your website accordingly, right? If you're a five hundred dollar a month company, you know, selling selling you know something out of your your garage, okay, I understand you maybe maybe need to put in that that elbow grease work. But if you're a ten million dollar company or even a one million dollar company, it's time that you brought in someone who actually knows what they're doing because not handling that website is absolutely costing you money. When the beginning of this, we talked a little bit about like the fears, the things that keep you up at night. Um, I want you to sort of close this out with um, may- maybe what the ideal situation is. If if I spend the next you know six months to a year, I invest the money, I bring on somebody amazing like you to help me out. What is what does a year from now look like? Like what's different? That's a fantastic question, and I think you know obviously piece one would be knowing knowing where the website shortcomings are, knowing where you can improve, and working towards that. So you know with a year from now being perfect, you would have a better idea of analytics and reporting. You would get monthly reports and you would be able to see how that progress is actually paying off as opposed to just, again, sh- those shots in the dark of, I hope this works. Um, you'll be able to see where that customer or user traffic is coming in. You'll be able to see conversion rates and you'll be able to kind of pull those different levers of knowing, okay, I get more traffic. And if I do this, then I get more conversions. If I get more conversions, then I can do this. So kind of the overall, I would say from a data piece, analytics piece, you have more wealth of knowledge that you can use to systematically and strategically place marketing dollars. Um, And then I would say, you know, step two of that is that you have a website that one, you love and it looks gorgeous and it works for your users, but then you're building on that. You know, maybe you are working on a content strategy. Maybe you are going through and kind of retargeting and running a digital ad campaign. So I think there's a lot of opportunity with just that kind of, you know, knowledge is power. You can't fix what you don't know is broken. So starting there and then kind of laying the pathway to now I have more information. Now I know who my customers are. Now I can accurately market to that specific segment of people and maybe the small circle around them, expanding that as you go. Um, And then you can strategically place those marketing dollars and know confidently, sleep well at night, knowing that they're going to who you want and that those people are then going where you want them to go. Yeah, and, and I, I love I love that of one, you know, if you're doing this right, you're gonna have some great data to sort of back up your hunches. You feel like your website's working, but now you can actually tell. And then the second one is, you know, you kind of alluded to this, but I wanna come right out and say it is, if you spend the time and the money to get your website set up and really working great, you should see it affect every other piece of your marketing. You should see your billboard driving more conversions to your website. You should see your social media driving more traffic to your website. You should see your word of mouth driving more people to sort of the reviews page and then on to, to, you know, interact with your website. Like you should see that work and then you should be able to see it in the actual traffic on your website because now you'll have that reporting tool. Then if you're doing this right, now you're armed with a whole nother suite of weapons, which is you can do digital retargeting. You, you can figure out how to sort of optimize those conversion paths. And you should see that growth continue to snowball. Absolutely. I could have recapped it better myself. Beautiful. Well, let's end it on, on some homework for our audience. Gabby, will you will you give our audience, if they're if they're your ideal customer, they're, they're somebody who's really struggling with this, they're frustrated, they don't know where to start. Would you give us sort of that, that close out of, you know, what should they do in the next seven days to, to sort of make some forward progress? I would say start off by taking a deep breath. This stuff is hard. You know, these web things are not intuitive to everybody. Kick yourself. If you're not sure where your website stands, the best thing that you can do is on your phone, look up your website, go through it, put yourself in your ideal user's shoes and act or fill out a form or try and find your information. And from there on a quick list of, okay, maybe improve in these areas. These areas are pretty good. And, you know, from there, kind of execute it in the best way that you can. So if that's a little bit of DIY, that is reaching out to someone who you know is tech savvy on your team and just being like, hey, need help with this. Or if it's a full-blown digital audit and you don't know where to start and you don't have the time, 
give us a call. Give us a call. We'll run a full comprehensive audit for you. Hand over the report, you know, bow tied and everything. We can handle it. I love the parallel as we close up here. I love the parallel of have someone secret shop your store, have someone secret shop your website, right? That is literally what our team does. They'll come in, they'll act like a customer, they'll check everything, they'll do all the processes, and then you will know, does it actually work? Is the website doing what it's supposed to be doing? Because as a business owner, that is one of the most important things you can do. Gabby, thank you so much for taking the time to, to sort of join me today and to share that knowledge. Um, I hope that you'll be willing to do this again. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me.